Now listen to these words. And try to put any other interpretation upon them in the world, and then tell me if you can. This is from the 25th chapter of the book of Matthew. Inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. You don't need the consent of any being in this world to hear good news for them. You don't have to say, do you want me to hear it? Do you want praise? If you ask them in advance, should I hear good news for you? You're only asking. In the event that it works, they'll praise you or in some way give you something. You don't ask anyone for their permission to hear good news. For inasmuch as you have heard it, as you have done it, to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. And when you did not do it, you did not do it unto me. And to every moment of time, there's the opportunity to do it unto Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus being your own wonderful human imagination. And to see man in need and not act in your own wonderful imagination as she did is to keep the wounds open and to bear more and more stripes upon the body of Christ Jesus. For the only Christ Jesus is in you as your only wonderful human imagination. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Come, test yourself and see. What a wonderful invitation. Test yourself. How could I test myself? Well, this is how you test yourself. I tell you that if you imagine, as this lady did, that someone stands before you in bodily form, though it cannot be seen with your mortal eye, but actually you imagine they are standing before you, and you carry on a conversation with them from the premise of your fulfilled desire for them. And then you feel them as you would feel them were they now solidly present. And you believe in the reality of that imaginal act. It's done. And how it happens, you need not be concerned. It has its own manner of externalizing itself within their world. All you need do is do it, as told us in the first chapter of the book of James. When he said, receive with meekness the implanted word, the word is called Christ Jesus, the power and the wisdom of God. But be ye doers of the word, and not merely hearers, deceiving yourselves. So when he tells me to be the doer of the word, the world thinks it means to go out and make some physical effort. No. James is not telling me to substitute works for faith. Works are the evidence as to whether the faith that I profess is alive or dead. Is it alive? If it is alive, I will act upon it. If it's not alive, well then, I won't act upon it. I haven't yet bought the pearl of great price. When I buy the pearl of great price, there is no other pearl like it. I sell all in this world to buy it. I sell all beliefs in powers other than my own wonderful human imagination. And everyone, because he has imagination, and everyone can imagine and everyone can believe in the reality of his imaginal act, he is free. It sets a man free. For we are told, you believe my word, and abide in my word, then you know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, how does he define the truth? That I am the truth. He says, if you know my word, you know the truth, and I am the truth. If you abide in this, then you'll be set free. 
You mean that if I simply imagine that I am the man that I would love to be, that's all that I need you? So just to try it. Imagine that you are already the man that you would like to be. The woman you would like to be. Your friends are total strangers are as you would like them to be. Just imagine it. Try it. Test yourself and see. As you test yourself and it happens, well then, can you turn back to the belief in any power outside of Christ Jesus? It's finding who we use. And I tell you, Christ Jesus is your own wonderful human imagination. Christ in you must resurrect so you start to exercise, believing in him. Believe in the Lord Christ Jesus and be saved. And so I begin to believe in him. Put all my trust in him. It doesn't matter where I start in life. Behind the eight wall, makes no difference. I start believing in him and only in Christ Jesus. And I take off from there. Giving my entire life to him just as though there were no other. Just Christ Jesus. And I have found him. He's my own wonderful human imagination. And when I believe in him to that extent, things happen. Now she tells me the same lady. That's why I named this tonight the Pearl of Great Price. She had a dream. Her hair was all mud. Nothing but mud. Whirling mud. And as it whirled and whirled and whirled before her mind's eye in her dream, she noticed a small, perfectly beautiful, perfect pearl. And she picked it up and held this perfect pearl. It wasn't big, but it was a perfect pearl in her hand. And then she went. Now this pearl she found in the series of experiences that she conducted. For a boy came east, came from the east to the west, with instructions that if he couldn't find a job in the immediate present, he had to return to the east. And so she simply, on a Friday night, saw him, not physically, but in her mind's eye, as though he stood before her physically, and congratulated him on the job, just as though it were a true physical contact. On Monday, the boy got the job, and therefore did not have to return to the East Coast. Now, here is a young lady. I call her a young lady. She can't be more than her early twenties. I looked at her through my eyes. All things being relative, she has three little babies, but I wouldn't think she's more than her early twenties. I'd be surprised if she passed beyond the middle twenties, looking at her. Born in Italy, of a Catholic family, Catholic faith, brought to this meeting of ours by her mother-in-law, and adopted this concept of Christ Jesus. Her family despairs because they think, unless you have their concept of Christ Jesus, there is no entrance in to the kingdom of heaven as they understand it. But I tell her she's well into it. She's exercising the only Christ Jesus in the world. He calls upon us to test him every moment of time. But you can't buy him unless you pay the price. And the price, it takes everything that you have to buy him. Listen to the words. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, finding one pearl of great value, went and sold everything that he had and bought it. Everything, not a few things. The average person would say, well, after all, I know, that's all well and good, but after Sanka does keep me in a state of sleep, and normal coffee keeps me awake. And I know that an extra martini does so-and-so to me, and I'll, I'll take none. Or maybe I should take vodka because it's good for my breath and not the martini. And a thousand things in the world people have concerning what they should do. 
every belief in a power outside of Christ Jesus, you give up. As you give it up and hold on to him and only to him, then you bought the pearl. And then you exercise it. The greatest value in the world, and that's Christ Jesus. So here she has tonight, I think she has the pearl of great price. I hope you tonight will accept it. You know, not everyone who finds Christ Jesus sought him, you know. They're brought to him by one who found him. In the gospel, Philip found him. And then he brought his friend Nathaniel. Nathaniel wasn't seeking him. Nathaniel was waiting for things to happen. For he knew the scripture backwards. When Nathaniel heard that the Messiah had appeared, he said, what? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Jesus said of him, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. He knew his scripture. Peter wasn't seeking him. His brother Andrew found him. And Andrew went and called his brother Peter. That we have found him of whom Moses and the law spoke. And all the prophets spoke. So they were not looking for him. But they found him because someone found him and was so interested in what they found. They wanted to share it with them that they loved. For if he is all that we claim that he is, we can't keep him to ourselves. We have to share it. And so maybe this night, a total stranger may be here. Who is really not overly eager to change their concept of Christ Jesus. They aren't seeking another concept of him at all. And maybe you will be interested enough to test what I'm talking about and see if this is not Christ Jesus. Or listen to it, by him all things are made. And without him, there was not anything made that was made.